Next, Iraq's Supreme Court has ratified the result of the October election. It confirms the victory of the uh, political movement of the Shia cleric Maqtada al-Sada. It's a move that could see Iraq's leadership move closer to Iran, but the court ruling is not accepted by all. Some say the judge has acted under pressure from al-Sada and his supporters. Well, let's bring in for a wider analysis of this story, Miriam Benrad, who's a professor of international relations at the uh, Schiller International University. Professor Benrad, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, given thank there's you. already an amount of doubt over the Supreme Court decision, uh, is this a workable situation? Well, I mean, it all depends on what the, the protesters will do. I mean, most of them, as uh, you know, are linked to uh, dominant uh, Shia militias, um, uh, which have become political actors for many years, uh, which were contemplating a victory for further consolidating their sway on the, the state apparatus and institutions. And uh, through this decision, the, the federal Supreme Court is um, attempting to reaffirm, uh, well, first of all, the sovereignty uh, of Iraq, because most of these militias are backed by Iran, so they're a vehicle of Iranian uh, interference. And the second thing is that there's also this struggle for uh, the state of law, um, uh, which very, very few institutions have managed to maintain. So the Supreme Court is trying, I think, to endorse a role in this respect, uh, but it all depends on what the next ma maneuver, the next action of these militias will be, and, and also what the uh, Iranians will um, attempt to... Uh, to do in terms of further interfering into domestic Iraqi politics. Indeed. So if Mokhtar al-Sada has now won the election, what does he actually want? Can you give us any kind of idea as to what his program might be, what his, his political wishes might be? Well, he won the election, but he's not a bureaucrat, he's not a technocrat, and he knows he's a nationalist populist leader, and he's built a popularity for now uh, two decades. Um, but at the same time, he's very well aware of the fact that most Iraqi citizens expect, as I said, the re-establishment of the rule of law. They really want to have uh, competent technocrats in charge because, as you know, uh, well, the country is mired with corruption, uh, the state is dysfunctional, the reforms have never been, been passed from one election to the other. So he's probably seeking to form a technocratic government with very competent people because he, know that it, he knows that it's the popular demand. Um, but he's now clearly engaged in this fight, in this struggle for power and influence with uh, rival Shia militias. Um, so we'll see, you know, how once again Iran will uh, act as a broker, what the decision will be, and, and which is why also you, talks with the U.S. could be decisive in this respect, because, well, the two uh, main actors basically um, having influence uh, on this are um, the U.S. less today, but still, and uh, Iran. Are the people of Iraq likely to see uh, any difference in their day-to-day -day existence? Will this decision, this new government, uh, improve their lives, do you think? Well, that's the main problem. There's, there's a disconnection between formal democracy, so formal electoral democracy in Iraq, and how people feel. So they, for a lot of Iraqis, they feel that they vote for nothing, that there's no change, that this entire Iraqi elite, as I said, is corrupt, is incompetent, unable to provide the well-being that they need, that they've been calling for for, for so many years. Uh, so democracy as a principle is, is quite discredited um, and, uh, and people have real demands. I mean, you know, they are not demands, claims that this government will be able to postpone. Um, I would like to add that Iraq was very weakened by the COVID-19 crisis, which further aggravated the social crisis and, um, and issues like unemployment, um, well, precarity, even misery in some communities, and and um, I think it's really not um, it's really not possible to further postpone what what the people need, and um, the risk would be to witness new protests uh, like the ones we we saw in, in in 2019 because the situation has become unbearable for for many people. 
Miriam Benrad, Miriam. Professor of International Relations at the Shield University. Thank you very much indeed for that analysis of the uh, implications of that uh, ratification of the election results uh, in Iraq, uh, giving the uh, Shia cleric Muqtada al-Sadr's political movement victory at the Supreme Court, uh, ratifying that. But of course, as our guest showing, uh, many more questions remain to be answered uh, in Iraq going forward. For more news, stay with us. You're watching France 24.